Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how my father worked on these two buildings. On the left is the Telegraph and Bank building, and on the right is the Mayor's house. As you can see, he started with a basic blueprint for his Telegraph slash Bank building, and he wanted to have bricks, so he started to carve them out of the surface of the balsa wood panels. He even cut open the doors and windows. Now, the carving of the bricks wasn't going to work, so we found a brick paper. And you can kind of see how he applied the brick paper to the surface. And then, he started making windows, custom-made windows and doors, that can be fitted on to the surface of each wall. And you can see he's applying the tape, so that way when he paints the windows, it doesn't overpaint onto the brick wall. Here's a view of the roof. And now you can kind of see him gluing some of the panels together, and then the roof is on top. The roof has kind of like a tar paper surface to it. This is the finished product. He couldn't really do much with weathering the brickwork, because while the paper is textured to feel like brick, it doesn't take to weathering the way that other products do. So as you can see, as we turn it, the windows are actually three-dimensional. They are each made out of pieces of wood. And the doors are custom as well, with little doorknobs on them. And when this thing is completely finished, there will be lighting on the inside and little porch lights on the outside. I have yet to figure out how I'm going to do the words on the building, which name it a telegraph or bank office as well as the name of the building itself will be all the way at the top. But I'm very pleased with the way this looks. I'm very happy with how it has turned out. Now here is the mayor's house, or so I call it. It was originally just a pre-built model that I purchased at a local model railroad club because it was abandoned by its owner. And so I just wanted to see what I could do with it. Now, in order to paint it, my father had to apply a gray primer to the whole thing because the plastic is too smooth. The paint wouldn't take to it very well. So here it is with the gray primer applied. Now here's the color scheme that I wanted it to have, sort of blue with a milky white trim and kind of like a beige roof. You can see the progress where he was painting the walls and the chimney. And then, in the next pictures, you can see how he completed the roof. The roof is not necessarily just brown. It is a lot of different colors of brown that kind of make it this light, almost orangish color. Now, this isn't the completed product. You can see the windows and the white trim has not been painted yet. Now, here is the finished product with the white trim applied. Now, it's not exactly a bright white trim. It is sort of a cream or ivory colored white. I just wanted it to kind of look nice. I just thought it had a nicer look to it. You can also see that there are rocking chairs applied to the porch, and we can get a nice view of the amazing details my dad put into the, um, the chimney. You'll also notice the blue is not painted very evenly, and there is a reason for that. Again, this is not a very rich mayor. He's a mayor of maybe a thousand people, and he lives all the way out in the middle of nowhere in the woods. So the blue is applied in such a way that you can see the brush strokes of the people that painted it for him, or maybe the mayor painted it himself. And so there is a lot of human flaws that have been applied into the painting of this on purpose. And so I think my dad did an amazing job. This house may not actually be the style of the 1890s, but uh, my dad sure made it look like it is. So thank you so much, dad, for all this amazing work. It looks absolutely wonderful. Now, here is what the mayor's house kind of looks like in its element. It's kind of perched atop a little hill. There will be a horse paddock, as you can see the horse is there, although the horse will be repainted. But uh, yeah. So it just sits there with a nice view of the river to the right of the screen and then a view away from the tracks across the way. 
Now as we zoom out, you can see how the farmhouse will look in comparison to the rest of the town. Don't mind that little DeWitt Clinton train model, it won't be there permanently. But here are the two buildings in their element. I think ultimately they've turned out really amazing, I really enjoyed them. Thank you so much to my father who did this amazing job with both these buildings. Now if you'd like to see more updates on the train layout, just subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell, and I'll see you all next time. Thank you so much.